Hello F11 members and welcome to the fundamentals of post-production video tutorials for issue 66. Also welcome to our new look F11 photography magazine which has taken over from the Chasing the Light online magazine with its own dedicated website. You know that already or she wouldn't be watching this but uh, I hope you're enjoying the new look. Uh, it's a big step for us and we're uh, really excited about it. Okay, so let's journey to Scotland, to Westeros, and in tandem with my behind the lens uh, feature in this uh, very um, issue, here on the screen in front of us is a picture of Upper Loch Torrid in there. This is the mountain of Ben Allegan there, and over here we have Lyotach. Beautiful scene, gorgeous light on an evening, a May evening, a long day. And this is the picture that I've ended up with. Uh, I wanna show you now the starting point. There you go, the image on the left, straight out the camera. And we're gonna talk through the post-production on this image. As you can see, quite a difference between what we're seeing here. As always, this game of post-production is always about bringing out the information that's there and the first point is always getting the exposure right. So if I go back and I reset this picture now to where it came in, if I go reset there and come up to my user presets here, DMP, there, that's how the image is ex imported into Lightroom with just a touch of vibrance and a touch of sharpening applied. Uh, and as you can see up here, quite a high contrast scene, this. Quite a difficult one to uh, expose for. A little bit of clipping both ends because of the high contrast lighting situation. Bit of clipping of the shadows and a bit of clipping of the highlights shown there in the histogram. And if we look now clearly at, if I just hold my black slide and hold down the Alt key with the black slider, we can see immediately where there's clipping of the shadows down there in the bottom left in the darkest part of the image. And also, we can see that red, screaming red highlight alert telling us that in that bright white cottage there, which sits uh, uninhabited for 11 months of the year. Incredible, isn't it? What a location and what a waste. Right, so what are we going to do to bring back these highlights and shadows? Well, of course, I could just come to my highlight and shadow recovery sliders and, for example, with my highlights, bring that right back and with my shadows, boost them right up and I would retrieve that information. Trouble is, you know, doing that affects the whole of the image and tends to flatten the picture. So what I'm going to do is use the adjustment brush and the grab tool in tandem to tease out the uh, best adjustments for specific areas of the image. So the first thing I'm going to come down and, and look at, I'm going to click on my adjustment brush here and now come down and what I want to do is recover some of the shadow detail and just brighten up this bottom sort of quarter of the image there. There's some lovely detail down there, but it's just a little bit dark. So you can see I've clicked on the adjustment brush. There's the size of my brush. I'm going to click now on show selected mask overlay. And I'm going to paint. And I can adjust the size of my brush here. I'm using my Wacom uh, graphics tablet and doing that is very, very quick. Uh, but you can use the bra square bracket keys on your keyboard to do the same up and down on your brush size. So now I'm going to paint in here and this is what the red is just illustrating to us the area I'm selecting. As yet I've done nothing to it. So I want this shadow detail here and I just paint this in, go with a little bit of a bigger brush size. I'm not being too specific because you can see I've got quite a feather radius on my brush, so it's going to be a soft edge now. Just make sure I've got all that selected. Okay, I can click off the mask overlay now, 
And if I come up here now to my shadow area and boost my shadows there to bring out that detail there down in the bottom of the image. And I don't want to go too far because there is beauty in a dark shadow. It's part of the scene. Okay, so I'm done there. Click on done. And I'm just going to look at the overall image now and it's too bright. So I'm going to use the tone curve here to pull it down to the right there. Apologies if you're getting background music. Uh, it's a hot day here and I've got the window open, but uh, these things happen. Okay, so uh, I'm looking at that scene and that seems about the right kind of density to the image here. The sky is still too bright, but we'll deal with that subsequently. Next thing I want to deal with is this screaming highlight in the house here. Uh, and I'm not going to adjust my highlights for the whole image. I just want to adjust them for this area. So I'm going to zoom in, Command Plus, and just go in on the house there. And now I'm going to use my adjustment brush up here again, top right. Click on that adjustment brush. And now you, what you see here, I'm just going to adjust the size of my brush. Click on Show Selected Mask Overlay again. And now Paint again. So again, what I'm doing is selecting the area that I want to make the adjustment to. Uh, I'm not making that adjustment yet. This red is just showing me the area I've selected. Have that auto mask clicked on because then you can see it will pick up this hard edge and only apply the mask to the area I want it to. Now if I go down, really down on my brush size here, if I go over and it starts incurring on the edge of the uh, outside of the area. I can just come here to erase now. Again, adjust my brush size and erase that mask overlay away. Okay, now I come along here, go back to A. Click the mask overlay off and now I come up here in the adjustment brush options and come back on my highlights. Recover those highlights. And I'm going to go quite heavy on that. Now it's a screaming white in the middle of this picture and of course the cottage is all part of the scene but that bright white is a little bit discerning. So I'm going to recover the highlights and pull the exposure back a touch. Just so it's not such a, a bright white. And that's worked really quite well. I, I think you hope you'll agree. Come up here now, go to fit. So I see the adjustment in the grand scheme of things. I'm going to come a little bit back up on the highlights too and a bit more on the exposure there. It's looking a bit dirty there now, a bit of a dirty white. So I've gone too far. So that's probably about right. Click on the done. Next thing I want to do is look at the sky and the mountains in the distance. So I'm going to use the old faithful grad tool here. Hold down my shift key and pull the grad down from the top here. I want a fairly soft grad and now I'm just going to pull back the exposure to get the kind of density in the sky that I want. And I want to you know, it's a great sky, really dramatic sky, lovely sky that evening. It was a wonderful session, actually. Really enjoyed that one. Okay, that's darkened down the sky nicely, brought the impact and the mood back, a nice soft gradation. I'm just going to dial in a little bit of contrast on that as well. It's flattened it a touch. And actually, I'm going to boost the whites as well. Now, if I come the whites are looking a bit muddy, you know, in the sky. So if I come right with my white slider, bear in mind this is only adjusting the whites in the area that the grab tool is affecting. And, if, and as you, you can see, 
If I go too far, we start seeing those reds appearing where I'm clipping my white. So I want to go as far as they just start to appear. And that's done a lot for my sky, hasn't it? Just pull it back just a touch more. And uh, I'm really quite pleased with that. I think that's a bit much actually, gone too far. Subtlety is the name of the game. About 120 is going to be about right. Okay, click on done. But actually, no, before I finish there, now that's darkened down the sky nicely, but it's actually darkened down this area on the side of the loch, which is in shadow, a touch too. Uh, and I like this detail here. So I don't want it bright, but I would certainly want to hold on to that. So I'm just going to click on my show selected mask overlay here. Come along to brush, come down to erase. So I'm going to refine the area I'm selecting, the area I'm making my adjustments to, by painting away that mask overlay. Uh, and so now I just paint away that red area there so that I'm not affecting this area of shadow on the far side of the loch. It's a minor thing, but these little details all make a difference to the impact of the shot. Click on mask overlay and uh, there we go. I think that's done. And the image is almost done, but not quite. Now you can see over here in the distance, Liatach is looking a bit flat, a bit hazy. So I'm going to use the adjustment brush here and just apply a smidgen, just a smidgen of dehazer to this area of the image. So I've got my adjustment brush on again here. I'm going to select a big brush size with a nice soft uh, feather and you can see down here feather 100 pixels the maximum radius which is giving me a really soft brush size again click on show selected mask overlay and paint in just this area here now it's a soft soft gradation there and I'm now going to click off show selected mask overlay and then come along here down to dehaze and just put a touch of dehaze in on that section of the image. Around about 15 or so is going to work well. And that's just brought in a little bit of contrast to that area, just dealt with that haze of touch. And now I click on done uh, and I look again at my area down the bottom here I'm just going to fine-tune that so if I go to my adjustment brush again click on that little dot there I can now fine-tune this these adjustments here and I'm just going to add a little bit of exposure just brighten that area of touch up to about plus 10 I think if you find making these adjustments difficult, you can use the, just highlight the numbers and you can go, you can set it manually. So I want to set about 15 here, I think. Okay, and click on done. And uh, that's looking good to me. That's the image finished. So there you, do, ha, you go. We've done it all in Lightroom. We've used the adjustment brush to selectively tweak uh, areas of the image. We've recovered highlights and shadows in specific areas of the image and ended up with this. And here's the before and after again. Okay, I think that was quite a good one for this month. Hopefully you agree. Uh, we always, as you know, want to hear your suggestions for what you'd like to see in future issues. So please let us know. Okay, I'll see you in part two where I'll work through another picture.